Gentlemen, welcome back to the shop. Behold, Badata. Layers to peel a carrot. This had quite a quite a good hit. And actually, people were quite impressed with it. And one or two people have suggested, why don't I try putting threads on the carrot and screw the carrot into a potato? Well, everybody knew that you can't put threads into potato. Threads into potato. Potato. You can't, you can't put threads into potato. In decades past, I'd have invited you outside to knock my teeth down my throat. However, tis true, we have seen butter days. Now, we've got the potato in the milling vise. And I've got the slitting saw out, fine tooth. Now you'll note I haven't cleaned up very well, and this is important, especially if you're of the vegetarian bent. I apologize, that was a slip of the tongue. Just like the house that the lesbian couple built. She was all tongue and groove, not a stud in sight. You're gonna wanna go ahead and engage your safety squints. Even though Bodeta is a fairly stiff vegetable, You never know when she's going to shrapnel on you. Now we just leave a little whiff cut just to keep it stable and we can just pop the top off just pop the top off easy as that oh now we're starting to see a little failure on the part of the vise there that's uh, that's no good ever forward we'll just hope for the best there you know when your spider sense starts tingling you just take a step back Assess and then forge ahead. Sometimes works out, sometimes doesn't, but this time we got lucky. Okay, so we got two sides good now. As you can see from that last cut, probably not the best machining strategy to use a, a thin kerf slitting saw, so we're gonna go ahead and change that up. And I'd just like to reiterate you know, if you're not making mistakes, you're not challenging yourself. We're getting a little deep for that shell end mill there, so... I'm just going to reduce the depth of cut. There we go. We'll have to take two bites at her. Pun intended. And uh, if you've ever smelled rotting potato, it's absolutely disgusting. So, uh, yeah, be prepared for that. I was a little aggressive on that first cut, as you can see there. A little wasted material. Pretty tough to make an egg without busting a few omelets. It's pretty good there. Just got a, a little nick in the surface finish, so we'll fix that. Lickety split. There we are. That's the final sort of spring cut pass. There we go. There we go. And of course there's a lip on there, but that's okay. We'll get that when we flip sides. Let's just go ahead and do a couple of passes on that rather than change the tool. I think it's going to be safe to climb mill. Oh, beautiful. Right on the money. Now we just do our spring pass here. Just to clean up that surface. Beautiful, beautiful. Now for my next operation, I'm going to move over here to my lathe. Now this is slightly overpowered for this, but some of you home gamers will recognize the Guangzhou Tuber Turner that's available from Harbor Freight. That'll do the job nicely as well. And of course we have the three jaw universal on the machine when what we really need is the four jaw independent. So we'll switch that out per usual. 
Now we're just going to snug this up, no need to go all A-bomb on it. It is a potato after all. Now we're going to go ahead and indicate this. And of course it's square, but we want to make sure that the sides are equidistant from the center so that our next operation works out. See, we're way off. Way, 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 way off. Okay, so that way and that way. Good thing we checked, holy. Now the well-salted machining crowd amongst us will note that I'm going for a reverse Rhodesian reach-around technique with the boring bar. I like to try new things on gummy or, or aerospace materials. Now normally I would recommend you go with the cutting angulations that you know. The heat of the meat being directly proportional to the angle of the dangle and the mass of the ass. However, in this case, we just don't know. I really don't like the chip that's coming off of there. We're going to have to reassess here. I think we're going to give her a little Uncle Donnie reverse action. Compliments of our old friend, the variable frequency drive. There we go. Yes. Yeah, chip formation is fabulous. Again, no lube. If you mess around with it long enough, you'll find that you really don't need any lube. It's just a matter of taking that extra little bit of time to get everything all warmed up and juicy. I'm just going to go ahead and take the spring cut. Oh yeah, lovely. Lovely. Now here's what we don't like to see. We've got a bit of a gland end on here. It's bulbous. Uh, I myself, yeah, I don't like to see that myself. Okay, we've got the cut set up to start our thread. We're just gonna do a, a tiny little cut here to make sure we're on target. I'll engage the half nuts, and of course we're going the wrong direction because we're on the Rhodesian side of the cut. Looking good, looking good. Yes. We'll do one more cut and then we'll uh, perform a briss on that gland end. And not to worry, I've had my hepatitis shots. Again, to each his own. Now that we've got the bolt completed, I know some of you have told me time and time again you prefer a nice clean hand job. Now normally I use twist drills that are unobtainium centered pixie dust. However, in this case, we're going to go ahead and use the chinesium drill bits on account of it needing to be potatoed off on the edge. I don't want to waste a good drill bit on this. Okay, and then we'll put it on the bench, and we have our tap, and we'll just give her a little tappy tap tap. And remember from grade 10 shop class, you have to turn it back in order to break the chip. I'm going to call upon you freshly minted engineers to uh, go ahead and guess what kind of fit that is. That's right, it's O, it's an O fit. Yeah, hot dog down a hallway. Perfect. Okay, now, here's the real trick. Potatoes have a lot of moisture in them, and for deep frying, uh, it doesn't work very well. So what we do is we take some salty water, and we let them sit in the brine. Now this, I have uh, tap water. This is for tapping holes, of course. But we do have some 
salt in there and we let it sit in there and that pulls the moisture out of the potato. You don't want to look like you're doing amateur hour when you're making french fries. Overnight is best actually. So we'll let that sit overnight and be back the morrow. Now the most important part, choosing the frying medium. Of course peanut oil is a good choice, canola oil, eh, okay. Uh, beef squeezings are pretty good. But the best of all, of course, is A9 aluminium cutting fluid. These are essentially dinosaur squeezings with 11 herbs and spices built right in. Now we've got a borosilicate cylindrical flask. You want to use borosilicate uh, what for not exploding under the heat. And it's prefabulated by this graphite uh, surmounting what for not damaging the steel casement here. <laughs> There you have it. Deluxe threaded bolt and nut pommes frites meat fricadelle. Oh, lekker mama. Now you could serve this a multitudinous number of ways. Dutch style dripping with mayonnaise. United States of Freedom style surmounted and enrobed in a high fructose corn syrup and red dye number five. I, however, in deference to our brothers and sisters in Leamington, I prefer it. Oh, natural. Thanks for watching. Keep your dick on the ice.